Tonight is one of the biggest nights of the year in football. It is college football, the penultimate selection tier. Let's go to Columbus, where Buckeye Nation is still licking its wounds after a stunning loss to Michigan as a three-touchdown favorite on Saturday. Ryan Day's job has been called into question far and wide as he loses his fourth straight against the Wolverines, this time as a significant favorite. The athletic director is Ross Bjork. He released a statement yesterday saying, our full focus right now is on the college football playoff and making a strong run. We have a ton to play for. We have a great team made up of talented players and great young men. Coach Day does a great job leading our program. He is our coach. Those are the things you say when the season isn't yet over. Paul Feinbaum and Heather Dinich are here. So, Heather, let's dive into that. I Ryan Day, to some degree, gets a reprieve because of the 12-team playoff. If there was the four-team playoff, he'd be out and we'd be having this conversation very differently. People are saying it's championship or bust for him to keep that job. Heather, what is your sense of it? He has to make it a deep run, I would say. Win the national title? No, I don't think that's fair. But get to the national championship game? I think that's a significant conversation because consider this. If the selection committee agrees with me on selection day and Ohio State has a first-round home game, can you imagine if they got knocked out early and ended their season with two home losses, one to Michigan? I mean, we're talking about his job being in jeopardy a hundred percent if that were the case. So a deep run. What's your sense of the situation, Paul? Well, first of all, I don't believe any athletic director's statement of support. That same athletic director, Greeny, Ross Bjork, he was at Texas A&M two years ago. He was with Jimbo Fisher until he fired him and gave him a six, $76 million payoff. So that's just complete balderdash. The bottom line is that he has to make a serious run, as Heather said. First round uh, knockout, I'd fire him on the, on the field before he gets to the midfield. Uh, I still think he probably ought to go. Uh, this guy uh, has been a very good coach. He's 66 and 10, but when you lose to your rival every single year, four straight, th so we're talking about three revenge games and the same result happens, especially this year. Uh, it, it's time to start packing. As I was watching that game, Paul, honestly, I thought of you. I said, I would love to be watching this game with Paul Feinbaum. <laughs> As that game ended, what exactly were the thoughts going through your mind? I mean, I was, if it hadn't been for the melee, I was wondering if he would get fired at midfield, but you couldn't find him because of all the pepper gash and all the flag planning and all the ridiculous fighting. And by the way, Greeny, what Ryan Day said after that was equally embarrassing to the loss. He defended his players for, for trying to maintain the home field. I mean, you, you just got run out of the stadium by three points, albeit, but as a 23-point favorite, uh, you just shut up and go home. And, and I, I mean, I, I, just, I think Ryan Day, remember, he was an interim coach when, when Urban Meyer stepped down. He, he's done a nice job record-wise, but the fans up there are sick of him. All right, we're going to get Bobby Carpenter in here with a take on this later. Now, Heather, tonight is the night, and I want to show everybody's Heather's projected bracket. This is how she thinks everything will fall tonight. Ohio State would be the eight seed, which would have them hosting Tennessee in the first round in Heather's projections. Heather, you also have Alabama ranked 12, but that would get them knocked out because of the way the rules work. The fifth highest ranked conference champion, Arizona State, would get in in these circumstances. So you got Miami, you got Alabama, you got South Carolina. I'm hearing a lot of people, Heather, take us through the teams that are on the bubble and what you're looking for tonight. Well, Miami is the biggest X factor tonight, Greeny, because if Miami is in, I think Alabama is out. If the Canes are out, I think three loss Alabama is in. And the reason I have the tide at 12 in the ranking is because I think the selection committee will continue to honor Alabama, Ole Miss, head-to-head -head wins against South Carolina, as good as South Carolina is playing. But back to Miami for a minute, I think Selection Committee Chair Ward Manuel is going to repeat what he has said this season about the committee respecting close losses. They have two of them to Georgia Tech and now Syracuse. And those two losses, Greeny, are probably better in the committee meeting room than Alabama's two losses to Oklahoma and Vanderbilt, two teams that each have six losses. So we've heard the committee chair talk about Cam Ward and that offense and close losses. We'll see if they agree with me, but that's why I think they will lean towards the Canes tonight. Paul, two-part question. Do you expect Bama to get in? Do you believe Bama should get in? 
I think they will get in, and, 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 I, and I think they, they will get in, Greeny. And, and whether it's brand bias, I don't know. But to me, if the committee looks at Alabama and Miami, they see two very flawed teams. Listen, I, I, there's no quibbling about that. But Alabama has accomplished something on the field. They beat Georgia. They beat South Carolina. I'm just not impressed with Miami's wins. That doesn't maybe make up for Alabama's egregious losses. Uh, the Vanderbilt and Oklahoma games were terrible. But I think Alabama is a better football team overall. And I'd like to see Miami play that schedule and walk away with two losses. It, it wouldn't happen. Look, all I was hoping for when we went to the 12-team playoff was chaos. We've got it, baby. We've got chaos. <laughs> Heather and Paul, we will check in with you guys tomorrow after we get the penultimate rankings here. We'll find out what everything is sort of trending towards. And don't forget, this will be the place to see it exclusively. The top 25 rankings tonight. Reese and the guys breaking them down.